Amen. The Bible said in John 15, 13, greater love. Have no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friends. That word friend in Greek is pronounced philogos. It means someone to talk to. Look at somebody and say, Jesus was dying on the cross for somebody to talk to. What the first Adam lost in a garden under a tree, Jesus, the last Adam, reconciled back, come on somebody, in a garden on a tree. It was fellowship. He's in Genesis 3, verses 8, God's voice comes walking in the garden of the cool of the day, and he said, Adam, where art thou? Now, God didn't have some type of memory lapse. God didn't need GPS. Come on, somebody. He didn't need Wi-Fi connections. Come on, somebody, to find out where Adam was. But Adam had went somewhere God had never been seen. But even in Genesis 3, 8, when God's voice is pursuing Adam in the garden saying, where art thou? That, my friend, is nothing more than a portrait prophetically of the cross. Because when Jesus hung on the cross in John 19, he said, I thirst. They tried to put drudged wine, vinegar in his mouth, but he refused it. Though the Son of Man part of him was thirsty for fluids, the Son of God part of him was thirsty for fellowship. He said at a well in John chapter four, hallelujah, while the disciples, like modern church people do, they went to town to eat. And Jesus sat on Jacob's well because he knew there was a woman. She was going to come and she wouldn't come with the rest of the women of that day because she was a woman of shame. She was a harlot. And so Jesus said, y'all go ahead and go eat. And he said in John 4, 34, he said, I got meat, I got food that you know not of. My meat, my food's to do the will of God. Come on, somebody. And to finish his birth. And when that woman came to draw water from that well, he told her in verses 10 of John 4, if you knew who it was that was talking to you, you'd ask him for a drink and he'd give you a drink of everlasting life. I'm telling you, Jesus was exhibiting thirst for humanity then. He denied even his flesh as the son of man to go and eat with the disciples because he was hungry. He was thirsty to fellowship with a woman that nobody else wanted. Friend, that's the portrait of the cross. It's not Jesus just dying for our sins. Well, you know, 1 John 1 and 7 says the blood of Jesus Christ, amen. His son cleanses us from all our sin, and thank God the blood does cleanse us from our sin, but what's for the purpose of our sins being cleansed is so we might have fellowship. Because the whole scripture in 1 John 1 7 says if we have fellowship one with another, it's because his blood has cleansed us from all our sin. Somebody shout the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin so we might have fellowship with God. 1 Corinthians 1, 9, God is faithful who has called us to the fellowship of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, Jesus died on the cross because he wanted to have fellowship with me. He wanted to have friendship with me. You talk about what you go through to experience him. Well, the cross is what he went through to have an experience with you and with me. What Adam lost through sin in the garden, Jesus in a garden at that tree called Calvary, come on somebody on that cross, reconciled back to us. So what Adam lost, now through Jesus we can get back. Come on somebody. Jesus didn't die on the cross so he could start a church and make a bunch of church members. Acts 20 and 28 says with his own blood he has purchased the church of God. And that's not a denomination. That just simply means his people. Somebody say with his blood he bought a bride. The first Adam laid down into a deep sleep. Come on. Genesis 2, 21. And God took a rib out of his side and closed the flesh up. Somebody shout, God didn't give him a spare rib either. Hallelujah, praise God, amen. But he closed the flesh back up and then when Adam woke up, he saw God walking down the hills of Eden, not with Steve, but with Eve. If he'd have came with Steve, none of us would have got here. But he saw Eve, come on somebody, I believe Adam probably, and now this, this is just me, but he might have heard that old song in the church, I feel like something good's about to happen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And here God presents to him his bride. He took 
a rib from his side and made his bride. Well, in John 19, 34, a Roman soldier took a spear after Jesus had done said in verse 30, it's finished, and pierced his side and blood and water flowed out. Amen. Somebody shout, blood flowed from his side for a bride, for an intimate people, friendship, fellowship. Jesus didn't shed his blood to start a religion. He shed his blood to start a relationship. Hey, get about it here, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. That's the whole purpose of the cross. Not so you could just come and sit idle and have pneumonia and say you've joined the church. Because you ain't a part of him, his church, until you've been washed in his blood. His blood produces intimacy. Fellowship with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, we thank you. Now, my voice is about shot and gone and scratched up, tore up. It's my fault. I ain't no devil, so don't rebuke a devil. That's what happens when you preach and you soak down in sweat and you stand outside on cold nights like we've been having, knowing you need to be inside. Hello. But I'm going to try to do whatever the Holy Ghost tells me to do for just a brief moment here. We, we often do things prophetic at drums and, and uh, sing and whatever God gives us to sing. Hallelujah, so we're gonna try it. It's the only way we can test it is just try it, amen? Hallelujah, but Hebrews 10, 19 said, we're full beloved brethren, having boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, Hebrews 10, 19. So Lord, here we come, yeah. I'm coming by your blood. Yeah, by your blood. Lord, you call me your beloved. We're full beloved brethren, having boldness. You enter into the holy end. Having confidence, Lord, by your blood. So here I come, here I come, Lord I run, here I come, I'm running, not from you Lord, but into you, yeah. Tell him here I come, here I come, by the blood, Lord, to you I run, yeah, I'm coming into you, that's what intimacy is, intimacy. Come on in, come on in, yeah. side. into my presence by my blood, come on in, come on in, to my presence, be my friend. That'll never live down his life for his friends, your friends. Greater love and no man than this. That'll never lay down his life for his friends. He calls me friend, friend. I'm his friend. More than religion Jesus my best friend Lord I run into you again And by your blood I come in Into your presence By the blood of the Lamb Jesus you call me friend Lord you shed your blood on that aroma of your cruel cross to save the lost so you might call us friend he ain't coming back for a girlfriend no not some Sunday morning dater 
say he's coming back for a bride. Yeah, yeah. Won't be long. He's going to call. He's going to call his own home. But he's coming back. religious sect come on somebody going through the routines of man made religion but he's going to come for a friend come come even so come Jesus come my best friend come To come into his presence and hear his voice call me free. I don't know where are you. I miss you. I miss you, be my friend. Yeah. Hey, I don't know where have you gone. Why have from me wrong? Come back to my presence. You can come back in, cause on the cross I took your sin. Come, come back in. Even Jesus said to Judas when he was betraying him in the garden, he said, Friend, why do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? He called me friend even when I was unfriendly. Hallelujah. Yeah, on the cross, he called me friend. Somebody to talk to. Jesus, that's why you hung on the cross. You died for a bride. Yes, you did. Come on, lift your hands to me. Draw us in. Draw us in, draw me and we'll run after thee. For the king has brought me into his chambers. His love is better than wine. <laughs> Woo! He calls me free. So in Solomon 1, 4 said, draw me, we will run after thee. For the king has brought me into his intimate chambers. Hallelujah. Lord, draw us, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, draw me. Bring me in. Bring me in. Bring me in, Lord, draw me in. Draw me, Lord. Draw me, Jesus.
But behold, I am more than a church service. I'm behold, I am more than a meeting. I say, behold, I am more than a gathering and a calling of an assembly. I say unto thee, I am a person. I am not a thing, I am not a feeling. Though I do great and mighty things, and when I come, I can be felt. But I am a person, saith the Lord. And behold, in these latter times, this shall be the very theme of my word and my counsel and my call. It shall be as it is found in Revelation 22, 17. The spirit and the bride say come. For behold, it will be in the last times you will hear my bride filled with my spirit say to the lost, come, and the lost will come. It will not be the organized religion and the denominationalism of these times that will have power to say come and they come. But it will only be those who are intimate with me as a bride is with her husband. They shall say come and they will not have to say it eloquently. They will just say it from intimacy and I will break the hearts that are cold and calloused and they will be convinced and converted through the power of intimacy for my bride will say by my spirit come and the masses will come. Only shall I use a bride this way. I will not use the organized religion and the man-made that they call church. But I will use those who know me in a secret place. I will use those who know me behind closed doors. 
It will be through them that I will open the blinded eyes and unstop the deaf ears. It will be through those who fellowship with me, saith the Lord behind the curtain, that I will reward them openly as they have sought me in a secret place. And I will snatch the curtain open and I will step out on the stage of their intimacy with me and their friendship with me. And I will do mighty exploits through them in their hands. And behold, they shall cast the devils out and they shall raise up the afflicted and they shall cause men who can't walk and women who cannot live without assistance from something that the medical field has given to them but they shall touch them and they shall have virtue that will flow from them as I did and they will be made whole in the midst before the eyes of the heathen it will be through the intimate bride that sits with me that spends time with me that don't just know about me but knows me intimately it will be through them that I will show signs and wonders just before I return again to catch my church away says the Lord somebody give him praise hey. 